Omen, Wikipedia article audio. An omen is a phenomenon that is believed to foretell the future, often signifying the advent of change. People in the ancient times believed that omens lie with a divine message from their gods. Ancient Near East Ancient Greece Ancient Rome Astrology Good or bad These omens include natural phenomena, for example an eclipse, abnormal births of animals and humans and behavior of the sacrificial lamb on its way to the slaughter. They had specialists, the diviners, to interpret these omens. They would also use an artificial method, for example, a clay model of a sheep liver, to communicate with their gods in times of crisis. They would expect a binary answer, either yes or no answer, favorable or unfavorable. They did these to predict what would happen in the future and to take action to avoid disaster. Though the word omen is usually devoid of reference to the change's nature, hence being possibly either good or bad, the term is more often used in a foreboding sense, as with the word ominous. The origin of the word is unknown, although it may be connected with the Latin word audire, meaning to hear. The oldest source for this practice in the ancient Near West came from Mesopo practice attested at the first half of the second millennium BC and it was vigorously pursued by the Asian kings, Isar Haddon, and his son, Ashur Banipal in the 20th century BC. There were three methods to interpret omens, and they were hepatoscopy, lecanomancy, and libanomancy. Hepatoscopy is to observe irregularities and abnormalities on the appearance of the entrails of a sacrificial sheep and they were used most in royal services. Astrological omens were popular in Assyria, during the 7th century BC. Diviners gained much influence by interpreting the omens and advising the king how to avoid the terrible fate during the reign of Esar Haddon. One of the things they would do in Assyria was to put a substitute king on the throne, and the true king would hide for a while. The substitute king was expected to take the evil consequences and when they believed the danger is over, they would execute the substitute king and the true king will be back on the throne. The observations of omens were recorded into series. Some of them dated back to the first half of the second millennium BC, and these were arranged as conditional statement later. This belief of omens later spread out around the Near East and beyond when clay models of sheep livers used for the diviners to learn the craft were found in Baghazkoi, Ugarit, Megiddo, and Hazer. Such practice was found in Israel as well. Compared to Israel, they used the methods listed above except, hepatoscopy. According to the Bible, God did not answer King Saul through dreams, or Urim and Thummim, or prophets, before his final confrontation with the Philistines. Thus, showed that they have a similar belief and practice with their prophets and dreams and similar tool as Urim and Thummim. Letters from the city Mari dated at the latest from the 18th century showed that this divinatory practices were not limited to royal court, but also played an important role in everyday life of the people. An oyanos was defined in antiquity as the carnivorous vulture, especially a prophetic bird. By careful observation of the bird's cries and the way or direction it flew, the augurs attempted to predict the future. They also saw lightning or thunder as omens, sent from Zeus, and observed the direction in which they saw or heard them. Omens represented the divine will and the decisions of the gods, their positioning opposite human endeavors, and were aimed at being understood by sensitive receivers of the time who brought the divine charisma to become intermediaries, channels between the world of gods and humans. Even since Homeric times, 
the Greeks paid special attention to these signs, when they saw vultures from the left, another symbol of Zeus, they considered it a bad omen. The cry of a heron or a lightning to the right marked positive and promising omen. In the Greek territory, seers also judged good and bad omens from the unwillingness or willingness of a victim to approach the altar and by the state of its offal when slaughtered. In ancient Roman religion, augurs interpreted the flights of birds to ascertain the will of the gods, in response to specific questions. Their system was complex, for example, while a bird sign on the left was usually favorable and one on the right unfavorable, the combination of a raven on the right and a crow on the left was favorable. Augurs also studied the behavior of domesticated, sacred chickens before embarking on important enterprises, such as a senatorial meeting, the passage of a new law, or a battle. These formal divine consultations by augurs are known as taking the auspices. Haru Spices examined the liver, lungs, and entrails of animals sacrificed to interpret the will of the gods, again in response to clear and specific proposals. Some omens came in the form of prodigies, unnatural, aberrant, or unusual phenomena such as meteor showers, hermaphrodite births or blood rain, any of which could signify that the gods had somehow been angered. The meaning and import of reported prodigies were officially debated and decided by the Roman Senate, with advice from religious experts. Threatening signs could then be officially expiated and the gods placated with the appropriate sacrifice and rituals. The interpretation and expiation of omens that suggested a threat to the state was a serious business. In 217 BC the consul Gaius Flaminius disregarded his horse's collapse, the chickens, and yet other omens, before his disaster at Lake Trasimene. Certain natural events, particularly lightning strikes and thunder, could be ominous for the public or state or only for the individual who saw or heard them. When a thunderclap interrupted his election as consul, Marcellus gave up his candidacy. Thereafter he travelled in an enclosed litter when on important business, to avoid sight of any bad omens that might affect his plans. Many Romans believed that particular words, phrases, or incidents might carry prophetic content aimed at particular individuals who witnessed or heard them. Such private omens could be accepted, and their benefits secured by use of countersigns, or verbal formulas such as accepit omen, a repuit omen, the consul L. Emilius Paulus, when about to embark on his campaign against King Perseus heard his daughter say that her dog Persa had died, given the similarity of the names and the death of the dog, he took this as a sign that Perseus would be defeated, which he was. The orator and statesman Cicero, though an augur himself, and apparently convinced that in capable hands, it offered a reliable means of foretelling the future, was skeptical of unsolicited, personal omens. He reports the story that Licinius Crassus took ship for Syria despite the ominous call of a fig seller Conias, which might be heard as cave neas, and was killed on campaign. Cicero saw these events as merely coincidental, only the credulous could think them ominous. In the field of astrology, Solar and lunar eclipses have often been considered omens of notable births, deaths, or other significant events throughout history in many societies. One biblical example is the Magi in the Gospel of Matthew who predicted the birth of Jesus after seeing the star of Bethlehem. Omens may be considered either good or bad depending on their interpretation. The same sign may be interpreted differently by different people or different cultures. For example, a superstition in the United States and other countries across Europe indicates that a black cat is an omen of bad luck.
Comets also have been considered to be both good and bad omens. One example of this is Halley's Comet, which was a bad omen for King Harold II of England but a good omen for William the Conqueror.